And then we can basically start by introducing uh, ourselves. So you introduce yourself more or less. So now, Patrick, would you, would you like to say a few words about you? Yeah. Hello, I'm Patrick. I'm studying software engineering and business informatics at um, or IT <laughs> at Pontius <laughs> Benlo. And um, yeah, I'm a 21 year old second year student. If you have okay. any questions regarding Fontys uh, or Fontys Venlo or Venlo or IT or anything that I just mentioned, just feel free to ask. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Patrick, you are also not from the Netherlands. You are from? Oh yeah, I'm from Romania. You're from Romania. From which city? Uh, Hermannstadt or Sibiu. Her Sibiu, okay. Uh, yeah. This is the city where you have like quite a huge German population. Is that correct? Or? Yes, exactly. Okay, and nice. Therefore, I can also speak or um, chat in German if anyone feels better that way. Wow, okay, nice. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, Patrick and I will do the presentation together. So, I usually take the lead and I will involve Patrick whenever uh, whenever it fits. So, he will join with, with some, some good information from the student side. Uh, my name is Alex. Uh, I'm a former student at Pontus, actually. So, um, I study international business. And at the moment, I'm a lecturer. So, I'm teaching marketing and leadership, both in our bachelor and our master uh, study programs. So, basically, we will provide you with, with all kinds of different information on the one hand from the student side because both of us are either studying or have been students. On the other hand, uh, from the lecturer side as well. Um, we prepared a little presentation for you, as you can see in the beginning. And from time to time, I will, I will ask a few questions, you know, so where you can also participate. Uh, you already tried it out by the chat box, so this is the usual way that we also do it um, yeah, in class. You know, right now we're teaching online as well. So also involving the students and they are also using the chat box. So whenever I ask one or two questions, you're more than welcome to participate. Yeah. OK. Um, yeah, so that's what I basically mentioned. You can use uh, the chat box, uh, preferably to uh, take part in this in this presentation as well. OK, uh, what you see in front of you is basically Europe, more or less. Yeah, and you can see where the Netherlands is approximately on the, yeah, in the middle to the left. Um, yes, exactly. I see that my colleague Linda is also in the chat. So if you have, uh, if you should have some some questions in the meantime, post them in the chat, and uh, yeah, either I or my colleague Linda will will answer them. Okay, this is the Netherlands over here. Um, yeah, that's where we are located at the moment. Um, what you can say about it is, is of course, that that's, uh, you see it is more or less in, in, the, in the center of Europe. Uh, it's, it's very easy to reach, you know. So um, I'm, I'm from Bulgaria, for instance, and I have, I counted, I have seven airports uh, around the place where I live and where I work that I can use to travel home back to Bulgaria, for instance. So it's a very centrally located place uh, in Europe, which is very good. Um, for the people that haven't been to the Netherlands so far, that is not a problem. We have... Uh, one picture of our headquarter in Eindhoven. Yeah, I will say a few uh, more words uh, in a few minutes about where Fonts is located exactly. But you can see one picture over here of Eindhoven. Um, Eindhoven is the fifth, uh, the fifth largest city uh, of the Netherlands. And um, you know, usually when when someone tells me, "Hey, this is like one of the largest cities uh, of, of the country," I imagine like huge, uh, huge buildings and so on, um, lots of traffic, but. What you can see here is, is exactly the opposite. You know, you see like more or less a uh, little bit smaller houses. You can see uh, a lot of green. And what you can also see or not see is a lot of cars. Yeah, because in the Netherlands, uh, people are, of course, driving cars. But that is not the main way uh, of, of uh, transportation of driving. Bikes are uh, the main way of, of moving in the Netherlands. And what you can see here is that uh, basically you have more bikes than uh, population, than, than people actually in the Netherlands. So my first question to you is, do you know how many people are actually living in the Netherlands at the moment? How many million or millions of people are in the Netherlands? Any idea? Just type it in, in the chat box so we can figure out how many bikes there are in the Netherlands as well. Anyone an idea how many people are in the Netherlands at the moment? 70, okay, I see 30 million, someone that is like maybe in the future, 30 million. At the moment, yeah, someone is saying 14 million, okay. 17 million, I see several people. Yes, exactly. So at the moment, uh, we have 17 million people living in the Netherlands. 
Yeah, and we have 18 million bikes. So we have more bikes than people in the Netherlands because some people own two bikes. Yeah, as simple as that. So most likely when you will uh, live and study in the Netherlands, you will also uh, move by bike. Yeah, uh, Patrick, what about you? Do you have a bike or, or how are you moving? I don't want to talk about it. I <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, I uh, I used to have a bike. Yeah. Uh, and I I had some events happening with it. Um, <laughs> well, what, what happened to it? Tell me. Uh, well, I had a little accident in the beginning, and oh, now okay. my bike got stolen. So okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> obviously, they they found the guy, and um, they they told me it's not a, a Dutch uh, person, but uh, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, okay. My conclusion okay. has been that it's also it's better and healthier for me to walk the half an hour. <laughs> okay, but 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 you, I I assume you're living close by the university, so you can walk, right? Or yes. And we'll come to this later, I believe. With yeah, exactly. Hockey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so by the way, that is also something very funny. You know, all over the world, you you uh, you can hear that. You know that that uh, sometimes your your car gets stolen. Uh, that's that, that's that's not the most common way in the Netherlands. So your car is more or less safe, but your bike, you know, is, uh, bikes are more popular in the Netherlands. Yeah. You buy and also sometimes uh, to get for free from someone like Patrick Corinne. Yeah, but then you get another bike, you know, even cheaper and so on. Yeah, then... they're not the most expensive. Like, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good. So, studying in the Netherlands. Um, of course, we can say a few words about it, why uh, a lot of people specifically now are more and more coming to the Netherlands to study, but then I would like to, to ask our people that join the webinar, like, why do you think Netherlands at the moment is one of the most popular study destinations in Europe. What could be reason? Just type it in the chats. Why do so many people want to study in the Netherlands or are studying in the Netherlands? Like Patrick, for instance, like I did a few years ago. What are the reasons? English programs. Very correct. Good English course. Yes, yes. Multicultural. Yes, definitely. Yeah. The Brexit, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Huh? So, so England is becoming um, uh, a little bit more expensive uh, to study. So people uh, look for uh, alternatives, you know, where they can still study in English, as you said. Yes, easy connections internationally, very correctly. Yeah, that's very correct. International opportunities, affordable living expenses. We're going to talk about that as well. How much you need per month. Affordable and job opportunities after studies are available. That is correct. Yeah, we have uh, a lot of students actually that uh, finish their studies with us from different countries and stay in the Netherlands uh, to work here. Exactly. Very, very, uh, very good reason. So basically, what, what, what should I add? Definitely, uh, good English courses. Uh, most of the study programs that that are available in Dutch are also available in English, which is very good. Um, Ninety-five percent of uh, the uh, the people in the in the Netherlands speak English, yeah. So that means if you if you talk to someone that is, yeah, to, to little kids, uh, the little kid already speaks English. If you talk to an elderly person, this person also speaks English. You know, when when I'm going to um, to a supermarket in the Netherlands, uh, I can only speak in English. You know, it's not a problem. When you go to a shop, you can uh, communicate in English. So that's that's not a not a problem here. And especially in the city of Venlo, where I'm working for it at the moment, you can do uh, next to English also uh, German. You know, so. Uh, the Dutch are first of all multicultural, yeah, and they're usually B or trilingual. So they speak like two or three languages, which is very good. They are very comfortable for people that are coming from abroad. Yeah, you exactly. Know, I have a story on this one. Uh, I got love. Patrick, uh, please. When I when I first came to uh, to Fontis for the open day, I think it was two years ago in November. I got uh, lost in Utrecht as I was uh, going around Netherlands to visit a bit, and my phone. Um, my phone was dead, so I had to ask someone. And there was uh, this, I think, 70 to 80 year old lady at the bus station. And I was amazed that she could speak English. And her English was really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so far, you, you don't experience any problems uh, with the fact that you might not be speaking perfectly. Yeah, no, no, not at all. <laughs> OK, good example, Patrick. Thanks a lot. Nice. Uh, I, I made the same experience, huh? so I can communicate in English with, with all people of all kinds of ages. Exactly, yeah? And um, now we're going to have a look at why, for instance, uh, you should or you could study uh, at Fontes, of course. Patrick, may I ask you first, like, what was your reason that you that you joined Fontes, that you decided 
to come from Romania to the Netherlands and then specifically uh, studying IT at Fontes? Uh, well, I relocated from Romania to Germany first. Uh, I have okay. lived in Germany for about eight years now, uh, but it doesn't. I wanted to study in Europe. Uh, I didn't want to go abroad uh, due to the fees and having family uh, in Europe. I wanted a, a course in English and I really wanted to study software engineering um, or something related to IT. Mm -hmm. Also at an affordable price and I, I wanted the bachelor's at the end. And it's interesting that uh, Fontis um, got their IT course um, um, approved for um, a bachelor's of science as opposed to many other universities which just give you a bachelor's of art. Mm -hmm. So that so, was also a big reason. Okay, so so basically the, the, the diploma that you graduate with is, is of higher value. Yes. To you in the end. Okay, yeah, that is very good. Okay, any other reasons? Anything that's um, that just missed? coming to Pontis and uh, seeing that I, I, I like the Pontis Vendor atmosphere just because everything was so, um, everyone in, uh, was so, um, how should I say, it? Um, nice with each other, and you could see that they're, <laughs> they're like a little family. They, the students were talking to the teachers like I haven't uh, really seen anywhere else before. Okay, so you felt comfortable basically when you when you yeah. arrived and had a look. Okay, yeah, okay, that, that's yeah. very good to hear. Okay, good. Uh, I'm going to share also my reasons why I started at, at Fontes a few years ago. Uh, I also went to to an open day with my dad, and um, I I wasn't sure what I want to study, but something with business. And then, uh, you know, I, I entered the hall and there were like a, a, a few trophies, you know, and I was like, well, what is that trophy about? You know, like, what are these prices? And then uh, we got a little uh, introduction to the university from, from one of the uh, of, of the staff members of the employees. And they said, yeah, these are our student companies. Well, it's a student company. So, yeah, in the second year, each student that studies business has uh, his or her own company with a few other students. And you develop a product, you know, you try to sell it, uh, develop a website with it. I was like, um, I'm going to have a company like in the second year. They said, yeah, you managed the first year, you're going to the second, then you are going to work on these kind of projects already from the beginning, you know? So you're going to practice all of these things and in the second year you make your own company. I was like, wow, that's nice. And then they told me that in the third year you're going to work for a company, you're going to do your first internship, and in the fourth year you're going to do your second internship. You're going to a second company where you're going to work. And uh, it took me 10 minutes to apply, <laughs> to fill out the documents on spot. And then I uh, basically started uh, studying at the university yeah, uh, one or two months later afterwards. So basically, these are also um, um, uh, one of the main reasons when we ask our students, why did you start actually at, at Pontus? Of course, Patrick, what you say, uh, people feel welcome. You know, like you and I are, are talking, you know, uh, that, that's actually how uh, university lecturers are talking to students, like very normally, you know, in a normal way. Um, there are a lot of projects during during uh, the studies, you know, already starting from from the first semester, you know, so from the first year you're going to work uh, in groups of students with people from different countries, like we have seen right now, you know, Spain, France, of course, Netherlands, of course, Germany, Romania, Bulgaria, and so on. Um, you're going to to be busy with a lot of a lot of projects. You're going to have two internships, so that basically means that for two times. Yeah, for half a year, you're going to say bye bye to, to Fontes and you're going to go to work for two companies, which is great. And it doesn't matter uh, if, if, if you study business, IT, logistics, whatever program at Fontes, it's the same structure that you are going to have, of course, a lot of practical experience. Uh, we have exchange programs. That means that for half a year, you can go to study at, uh, at another university in another country. Yeah, And I will say a few more words about that as well, where I went to, where my brother did go to and so on. Yeah, and of course, uh, like you already mentioned in the chat box, uh, you have good opportunities to start working in the Netherlands afterwards, especially because you have work experience. Yeah, you're not graduating just with, with good grades, but you're graduating with good grades and work experience in two different companies, which is something yeah, very valuable nowadays. Okay, uh, a few more things to, to, uh, to mention. What is also very special, maybe Patrick, you can say a, words, a few words about that, are uh, how classes are taking place, you know, because people are usually asking me, okay, like, uh, can I imagine it like this in my home country that we have like a huge lecture halls of 400, 500, 600 people in a room, or how are you teaching? Patrick, how is your class? I think it's weird to talk about that now, having 400 to 500 uh, students in a room. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't really happen anymore now. 
No, exactly. Uh, it doesn't really happen at all to begin with. <laughs> um, our classes, uh, the, the, the biggest class that I've uh, been in had about 40 students in it at most. Um, the interaction with the, with the lecturers is always very free. Um, if, if someone uh, asks the questions, and this is how I've seen it because um, uh, I have a friend who is studying at Tilburg University. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot more students there, but it's also harder for them to get their questions through because you have to ask yourself, OK, what are the other 800 people going to think about me? But <laughs> when you are uh, when when you have a group of 30 people, you kind of can you can connect much better. And um, the lecturers understand this. Uh, they um, and after each um, in my course or um, I think it's in every course. You also have a lot of um, practical sessions where after mm -hmm. the lecture you go ahead and apply what you have learned. Um, the lecturers are helping you. You also have a student assistant yeah. or student bodies who are um, guiding, who are there for you to help you when you are stuck with something. Yeah. Uh, and there's, as, um, as uh, Alexander said, there's also the projects the we you always have a project that's going on for one semester for maybe two semesters and um, you develop this um, this this um, um, how should, uh, this company mentality this working in the field mentality from the beginning okay so Patrick if I may summarize so with so it's basically like a school you know I remember when I when I started studying you know I was worried that you know because I watched all these American movies <laughs> I thought like, okay, I will be like in a huge, huge lecture hall and then I will be one, just one guy in between all those masses, you know? And then they, they, they said, okay, uh, yeah, this is your classroom. I said, what classroom? Like, say, yeah, maximum 30 people and one lecturer. So basically you can talk to the lecturer, ask questions, have a discussion during classes, you know, uh, that is fine. So, you know, maximum, um, I was in a room with maximum 60 people once, you know, but, but that was it. Usually it's in like 30 people max and that's it. Um, yeah, you, you have um, you have lecturers that are your uh, study career coaches, we call it like this. So you always have a lecturer that you can go to, you know, that will meet with you regularly in the beginning uh, to solve some problems that you have, you know, that, that you can ask questions. OK, how do I uh, how can I best prepare for, for uh, exams? You know what? Uh, any kinds of problem that you might experience. You have a lecturer that, uh, that's something like a class teacher, you know, again from school. <clears throat> and at the same time, you have a student body. So this, this is someone like Patrick, for instance, that is in the second year that already went through all of these things, starting to study, coming to me, <clears throat> having to figure out where, um, where, where, where his accommodation is, you know, having to figure out how to use, uh, how to download the slides, you know, the study materials and so on. You have a body that is basically getting in touch with you already before you start studying, you know, so already during the summer holidays, you get an email, hey, my name is Patrick. I'm from Romania, second year students, IT at Fenlo, for instance. Um, when are you arriving? So uh, Patrick can make sure that you meet. And then Patrick can show you where the university is, where your accommodation is, where you're going to be living for the next year, uh, um, how to register you know, in the city hall because you will be now a citizen of the Netherlands, how to open a Dutch bank account. you know, And all of these things you will not do alone. You will do together with one of our students. Yeah. Um, so no worries about that. And um, something that you said, Patrick, is, uh, is, is projects. Um, can I ask you for an example? Are you working on any project at the moment? Um, yeah, right now, as I'm studying software engineering, my um, my project, which is, uh, I believe, 10 uh, credits. Also, uh, are we going to talk about credits later? Because our university provides the students with more credits than uh, the normal ones, but anyhow, <laughs> okay, good. Uh, projects are a big part of your uh, of your study, and mm -hmm. this will take uh, more time than any other um, than any other course, because you you will learn in uh, you're learning you you will work in, in groups. Uh, you will always um, un, uh, you will start understanding how um, um, group work uh, works. <laughs> it sounds funny. Uh, and as the university is uh, accepting, or the, as the university has so many um, nationalities, uh, mm -hmm. and from the beginning you don't know who to work with, you are just going to start learning uh, about cultures um, very fast, and uh, you're going to to see how 
um, uh, how basically easy it is to work in such a close environment. Anyhow, my project right now is to um, work on uh, a traffic light system. And Tra traffic light system. So yes. like uh, red, yellow, green. Traffic yes, lights. I, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just in the beginning of the second year of software engineering. I haven't done this before. And right now we are working on a very comp uh, complex um, smart traffic light system uh, where um, we allow the, the traffic manager to install our system at every intersection and the system will uh, optimize everything for, for them. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it allows for sensors to be attached where it can sense uh, or the, uh, uh, we can uh, say when the rush hours are, we can um, tell uh, we can group all the traffic lights together so that the system can allow for a so-called green wave where you don't have to stop at every light if you're going straight. Um, and before this, we have to work on a simulation uh, where we can basically show the customer, okay, look, this is uh, a map and here you have traffic lights mm -hmm. and you can see the pedestrians walking around as well. And they, you can uh, see the pedestrian pressing buttons and um, it's basically a very um, complex traffic light system such that we have in Netherlands as well because I've seen that if you come to Netherlands and you look at the traffic lights and how the road, how the bike roads are prioritized, it looks very, very smart, I must, I must say. Okay, so 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 uh, let let me just get it clear. So basically, uh, we, we, if we apply your traffic light system that you, I guess you're programming it right now, right? Yeah. And creating a simulation. So basically, then we would avoid like uh, this typical situation when I'm walking somewhere. I see, okay, it's red for me, yeah. but I don't see any cars coming. So I'm just wondering why am I waiting here? So this yeah, will no, be that, avoided with you. Exactly. Uh huh. Okay, that sounds very good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Thank you very much, Patrick. If we'll put this in real life or not, uh, <laughs> we'll see about that one. <laughs> we'll see about that. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, then it's very important to to uh, to mention one little thing because maybe some of you have um, already um, uh, read that there are two different types of universities in the Netherlands. One is called applied science universities or universities of applied sciences. The other one is called research university. So I, I call it more like a traditional university. Um, again, I'm going to ask our people that are watching, do you know what's the difference? Like, why are there two types of universities? What are they different in? Just type it in the chat box if you, if you have an idea. Yeah, so I see University of Applied Sciences offer more practical way of learning. Yes, I can't agree more with that. We already heard uh, one of the projects that you're going to do each semester, like with Patrick. Exactly, yeah. More practical way. Exactly. Something else? Would they differ in another way? One is practical. Let, let me check that. We have a few answers. That's very good. One is practical business employment. The other is more futuristic and research based. Yes, the other one. So research university, as the word says, is more research based. Yeah. The other one is more practical. Yeah. You're going to do internships. You're going to meet companies, work at companies. Exactly. Yeah. It's easier to get a job after that. Aha. Uh -huh. That is a very good point. Huh? So, of course, when you when you uh, when you want to get a job, you know, then uh, when you read the job advertisements of companies, you know a lot of a lot of them are writing, "Hey, we would like you you to have already some kind of work experience." And then, of course, it makes sense if you can show them a little bit of work experience, like during internships, during your studies. Yes, research universities are more academically rigorous and focus more on specific topics. Yes, however, it's harder to get a master's degree. Aha! Okay, that's where we can talk about it as well because uh, I have two master's degrees after studying at Pontus, so. Uh, Yes and no. OK, but let, let me summarize it. OK, so research universities are the traditional universities we have in more or less each country. Yeah, uh, Applied science universities are only available in a few countries. When did it start? It started in the end of the 60s, not in the Netherlands, in Germany. Yeah, so universities of applied sciences are an invention 
of Germany and not of the German government, but the companies in Germany that said, okay, we would like, you know, uh, it's nice, we have good universities, we, we know that German universities are very good, but the people that, that graduate, they don't have work experience. And we would like to have people that have, you know, the knowledge, but also the experience. Yeah, so they started in the end of the 60s with universities of applied sciences, where people not only read books, but they also uh, get some kind of work experience with companies during projects or directly in companies going to, to work for companies during their studies. The Dutch, so uh, the people in the Netherlands, took this model over a little bit later and according to me improved it. Yeah, because uh, you not only have one internship, but you have at Fontes, for instance, two internships. You have projects not one, but you have projects each half year, you know, so every six months. Yeah, so they made it more practical. So basically, uh, this, this, this is the main uh, difference. You know, as research universities, you study more or less a bachelor is like three years. As applied science universities, it's four years, but this additional year is exactly this, this work experience that you're gaining with two different companies. Yeah. Um, something else that is also very interesting is that uh, what we just said with Patrick, that usually at applied science universities, you're being taught classes, classes of um, of uh, 30 people max, for instance, you know, which in research universities is not always the case. There you have like uh, more huge, huge lecture halls and so on. Um, another very important um, difference that I experienced myself is the exchange semester. Uh, it's applied science universities. Um, for instance, our, our business students, 90% of them go abroad. They go, 90% of them uh, go for half a year to study somewhere abroad. Yeah. Uh, well, at research universities, this is uh, happening to a lesser amount. You know, people prefer to stay in the Netherlands, for instance, and to stay at the university. While um, applied science people are usually using every opportunity to to get some kind of different experience outside of the university or outside the Netherlands and so on. Yeah, so it's a different kind of mentality as well. Yeah, I myself, I also went abroad to Slovakia. My brother went to Argentina. His friends went to Uruguay, India, and so on, America, Australia. Yeah, so that's also a different kind of mentality of the people that are studying there. Okay, um, well, in the end, uh, both um, with both you, you you get a bachelor degree. We heard one little comment over here I saw in, in the chat box. Yes, master's degree, of course. Um, okay, Victoria, oh, Linda, Linda is taking care of that, I guess. Good. Okay, well, in the end, you, uh, you can do bachelor's and, and master's at both types of universities which is great. So I, for instance, I did my, my bachelor study at Fontes, so at an applied science university. Afterwards, I did a uh, first master in the UK and in Liverpool. So I'm a FC Liverpool football fan, of course. And then I did a second master in, uh, in Monaco. So uh, I didn't have any problems to do a master's. You know, they just asked me, uh, did you study in English? I said, yes. Where? Netherlands? I said, yes. Okay, great. Then you're more than welcome. I said, okay, nice. That's, that's, that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. Of course, um, what what uh, sometimes can happen that if you would like to stay, so to to go to research university after your bachelor, you might uh, you might do a pre master. Uh, it's a very simple reason for that. Pre master is usually focusing on um, more theoretical subjects, you know, like methodology, mathematics, more statistics, you know, that that are of course studied uh, at Fontes, but they are not necessarily something that you will need uh, during your job. So if you want to do a research. Uh, at some universities, yeah, they might ask you, hey, you, uh, we would like to prepare you for that because it's more heavy stuff here, more mathematics. During our master's program, we would like to prepare you for, for instance, half a year before that, and they call it pre-master. Yeah, it's also possible. Also, I can also talk from experience because I want to yes, apply. Yes, uh, Not really from experience, but from asking around. I yes. want to um, do a master's afterwards as well. Yeah. Um, and I've learned that Germany, for example, doesn't require pre-masters and mm -hmm. you have a much higher chance just because you earn a lot more credits uh, than yep. uh, at, the, at the research university. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. You, do, you earn much more credits. Credits are given for each subject that you pass at the university. And in the end, you collect 240 credits because you study four years. Yeah, for each year you collect 60 credits and you get 240 in the end. That's what you mean, Patrick, I think. And with this... Yeah. Huge amount of credits. Most universities say you're more than welcome to do a master with that. Yeah, exactly. Um, let me quickly introduce our three main campuses. Yeah, we see the main campus here, our headquarters in the city of Eindhoven. You see a few students uh, on the picture. Um, 
why are we introducing the three cities? Because in the Netherlands, it's very common that you study specific study programs uh, at specific locations. Yeah. And in the Netherlands, it's like this, that you have a look, where is the industry? So where are the companies located? Yeah. And Eindhoven is, is, a, is a very good example for that because Eindhoven is known as the, um, the hotspot of technology and engineering in Europe. Yeah. So you have a lot of companies that are dealing with, with, uh, with uh, engineering and technology in general. Maybe one of the most famous ones is Philips, you know, the inventor of the CD, the DVD, Blu-ray and so on. This is Philips. So there is the industry of engineering and technology. And that's why also you study engineering and technology related study fields in the city of Eindhoven. Yeah, we have the city of Tilburg over here. Tilburg, as you can see maybe on the picture, is a little bit more creative. So it's known as the, uh, the creative center of the Netherlands. So guess what you study there? Uh, all study programs that are related to somehow more cre uh, creativity, you know, such as dancing, music, arts, or more creative business study programs. And then we have the city of Fenlo over here. You can see already one thing that is typical for Fenlo is the river, the Maas River. Yeah, Maas, you might have heard it from the city of Maastricht. Yeah, the Maas River is also going to, to Fenlo. And uh, Fenlo is only two minutes away by car from Germany. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's a very important hotspot for logistics, for transporting goods, transporting goods. You know, goods that are arriving in, in the main ports of Amsterdam and Rotterdam are going to the rest of Europe and they're going through Fenlo. Yeah, so Fenlo is a very important spot for uh, business, for logistics, because everything connected to transport of goods is logistics. Of course, what uh, Patrick is studying, this somehow needs to be managed as well by, by software engineers. So these are basically the three main fields that you can do in Fenlo, huh? IT, logistics and business. You can see how it connects to, uh, with your study as well, because in our second semester yeah. we did uh, a system that manages um, transport of um, of liquids on the road, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this yeah, semester exactly. we're also tackling transport again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. But, uh, be, uh, because the companies that are dealing with logistics are located around and in Fenlo. So yeah. these are, they need people like you afterwards, you know, after graduate. Where would the marketing management be? That's in Fenlo, of course, business. I'm a marketing lecturer, it's in Fenlo. Industrial design engineering program is in Fenlo. Yeah, it's an engineering program is one of the few programs, although I said the engineering program uh, are, some, are, uh, are in Eindhoven, this one is in Fenlo. Yeah, so the, the industrial engineers are located in Fenlo. Okay, um, I will quickly introduce you to, to the different study programs that we have over here. Huh? Not, not each program uh, specifically, we can talk about it uh, later if you have specific questions, but just the study fields. You can uh, see the first one over here, Allied Health Professions. So this is the study field. And we can check out which study programs that includes. You can see them over here, the bachelor programs and one master program located in the city of Eindhoven. Next one, arts. Guess where it is? We said already arts, more creative, Tilburg. Yeah, so dancing, acrobatics, circus and performance arts is nothing than, than um, acrobatic. Yes, someone is writing Tilburg. Exactly, very correct. And different kinds of masters, again, in music, performing, choreography, and so on. Then communication, yeah. This one is located in Eindhoven, by the way, so not in Fenlo. Yeah, communication uh, management. Then we have economics and marketing, yeah. Again, international business, that's what I studied. Uh, by the way, that's the most, uh, most famous and most um, sought after study program in the Netherlands. Yeah, most people study international business in the Netherlands. Right afterwards, uh, we have IT, yeah, also very popular, especially for people coming from abroad, like Patrick, for instance. Then uh, marketing management, digital business concepts. So a few of them, digital business concepts, more creative business program, studied in Tilburg. Again, trend research, you know, and, and lifestyle management. Again, a little bit more creative, Tilburg. Yeah, and two master programs in business in FEM. Then engineering, guess where you study engineering in Eindhoven except industrial design engineering. So these are the product designers and they are located in the city of Fenlo. I think mechatronics is also in Fenlo. Mechatronics, yes, but, but not in English. Yeah, mm -hmm. mechatronics is for the Dutch German people. Yeah, but the English program is located in the city of Eindhoven. Okay, ICT, 
Patrick, this is your field. We can see the first one. So ICT, Information and Communication Technology, with different specializations in the city of Eindhoven. But as we already said, quite an important field for the city of Fenlo and the companies in Fenlo. That's why Patrick is studying software engineering and business informatics located in Fenlo. So you can choose which one you would prefer. Then logistics and supply chain management. There is only one place to study it in the Netherlands, and this is Fenlo. Yeah, logistics engineering, logistics management. Very interesting story here. Um, maybe the, the most famous person that studied uh, logistics management uh, at Fontes is Pete Elbers. And Pete Elbers, Patrick, any idea who that is? Is, is that a, a boxer? Uh, no, not a boxer. <laughs> nice. I, I don't know. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Because I've seen someone on the slides who's um and I asked in my group chat who that is. Okay, and okay, okay. Good. I good. A, a very famous boxer also uh, started that uh maybe there is a very very famous boxer with a similar <laughs> name, yes. <laughs> but he didn't study with, with Fontes. No, Pete Elbers is is the general manager, the CEO, chief executive officer of KLM, Royal Dutch Airlines. Yeah. No, I didn't yes. Know. Yeah, okay, now you know. <laughs> yeah, so basically, uh, so, so uh, uh, this is also logistics. Huh? So managing a company that is transporting something, in this case, uh, an aviation company, you know, airplanes. And he studied logistics management. So he's not like the pilot, but he's managing this company. Yeah, so we are very proud of that, that he studied, actually, he started his career with logistics management at, at Fontes. Yeah, and I will check that boxer out, by the way, <laughs> after the presentation. <laughs> Okay, uh, just quickly. So uh, it doesn't matter which study program you choose. Yeah, you have more or less the same structure. So basically, the first two years you will be at the university at Fontes. Yeah, so in either Eindhoven, Fenlo, or Tilburg. Um, you, uh, the first year is more or less an introduction into your study program. So if you study IT, you get introduced into the different metric, the different uh, languages, I guess, right? Different programming languages that you learn. Yeah. Second year, maybe a little bit more in depth. Yeah. So you're doing maybe a bit more complicated projects like you're doing right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where you require a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more time, maybe because I know that you have been busy also during the weekend from time to time. Oh, first year, you're, you're learning the foundation and then you're, yeah. you're, you're seeing what's there. And then the, right now, we are uh, diving more in depth. And yeah, yeah. next semester uh, is going to be the, the branch focus. So either business informatics or software mm -hmm. engineering. Okay, exactly. Yeah. So, so basically, during the first year, uh, you get some kind of basics, and then during yeah. uh, year two, you start you're starting to focus on what you consider most interesting: business informatics, software engineering, for instance. Yeah. Or the other students like marketing. Yeah. For instance. Okay, exactly. Okay. Uh, year three, most likely, uh, we will, you will say bye to the university. Yeah, because this is a year which you can spend completely outside the university. So you can see first semester, so the first six months internship in a company. In the second uh, six months, you can go and do a minor abroad at a partner university. Uh, we have over 120 partner universities at the moment at Fontes. Uh, I mentioned a few of them, Singapore, very popular, uh, South Korea, Japan, very popular, Hong Kong, Australia, uh, Latin America, different, uh, Argentina, Brazil, uh, Zambia, uh, USA, Canada, Australia. Which has already New Zealand, and of course, different countries uh, within Europe. So you have uh, a huge choice to do. Uh, do you have to go abroad? No. You can also stay at Fontes. You can do a minor. A minor is a specialization. So, for instance, you can do uh, sports marketing, you can do event management, uh, you can do game design, you know, all kinds of different things that you would like to specialize at. You can do it at Fontes as well. And then year four, uh, you spend half of the year. So at Fontes, you're back, yeah? So the first semester, you're back, and the second semester, you start your second internship. So you go again to a second company. I can give you one example of, of one of my students that I was supervising. Um, which one to choose? We choose Diesel Fashion, Diesel, yeah? You know the brand, Diesel, like clothing, yeah? And um, Diesel have a problem because they have a, um, a clothing line for male and uh, for female, so a male, a clothing line and for, for women and one for men. What is the problem with that? That's um, if, if you ask several um, women, for instance, do you have do you own diesel clothing? Uh, many of them say no. And that was the problem of diesel because they sell more to men than to women. And we had a student over there in diesel. And uh, the task of the student was to figure out what the problem is. Yeah. 
and to solve it. Yeah. So she did a research. She asked the people that are actually that should buy diesel. Okay, what, what's 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 happening? Why don't you have diesel? Some said, okay, um, too expensive. It's too expensive. Okay, okay good. Noted. Others said, yeah, um, I don't know where to get it. You know, I don't see any advertisement of diesel. You know? I'm I'm seeing all the other brands, but not diesel, for instance. Um, Okay, noted. Uh, other sets, okay, no problem. Um, I know where to get it. Uh, I know what it offers, but it's simply, not, you know, it's 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 old fashioned. Yeah, I expect some more colors, you know, and, and, and more different designs. Okay, noted. So the students uh, made a market research, uh, collected all these data, and then said, okay, I'm going to propose a few activities that, that, that you can do. Huh? So, so how you can advertise these a little bit better, how you can maybe design the products a little bit better. Yeah, so internship means that you're not only going to work for a company, but you're going to apply what you learned at university, yeah, how to do market research, how to give recommendations, yeah, and you're going to, to help a company with it, solve one of its problems, and you're going to write a report about it, you're going to hand it in at Fontes, and you will get a grade for it, because it's an official semester of your studies. This is what you're going to do twice, two times, yeah, and if you're lucky, like my brother, for instance, he did a very good job during his second uh, um, internship yeah the company kept him directly he said hey we need someone like you you did a good job of course they needed a new employee you need to, of course always to have a look he liked the company as well yeah because it's not necessarily that, that you would like to stay where you did your internship but if everything fits you stay in the company where you did your internship and yes then it's really easier to to find a job because of your internship yeah so basically basically this is this will be the four years that you will spend at Fontes or outside of Fontes so here we have a few examples of where our students are right now. Uh, you see many, many of the companies might be familiar to BMW, Lufthansa, Unilever, uh, PepsiCo, Volvo, uh, Tesla, Daimler, Porsche, uh, ASML, maybe not such a well-known company, but if you are in the state of Eindhoven, yeah, it's a very famous chip maker. Yeah, Siemens, Hugo Boss, Louis Vuitton, Bayer, Walt Disney, always students at Walt Disney. Yeah, so... These are a few well-known companies. Of course, students also can go to, to uh, back to their home country, uh, to maybe smaller companies, to local companies. That's also what happens very often, you know, that people say, hey, um, I would actually like go back to my country after studying in the Netherlands. That's possible. Then it might make sense to maybe choose also an internship, at least one of these two in your country. So to get to build up some kind of network in your country afterwards. Yeah, it's, it's up to you. Good. Now let's come to... A few, a few uh, hard facts. So if you would like to, to study at Fontes, what do you need? Basically, you need three things. Yeah, you need to finish school. How do you prove that you finish school? You show a secondary school diploma. Yeah, and then some people might ask, okay, uh, do I need a specific grade, like an overall grade of uh, whatever? No, you don't need that. Um, you only need to, to have finished school. Why is that? Yeah, because uh, the system in the Netherlands is a little bit different. Um, you know that in many countries they have a look at your school grade maybe you have some different kinds of assignments tests that you can pass so that you can enter university the netherlands is a bit different the system over here is that uh, the country would like to provide uh, an opportunity to study for a lot of people yeah because you know you you, you know it uh, maybe uh, some people that were um, not as successful uh, at school as they would like to be are great students afterwards and the dutch recognize that they did that you should only be based on your achievements at university. So you get the chance to study at the university in the first year. And after this first year, uh, you are going to have a look, hey, are you actually a good student or not? Did you actually pass your exams or not? Yeah, so there are no additional tests in the beginning. You start studying, yeah, and then you figure out during the first year, is that something that, that I'm capable of doing? Yes or no? Okay, so that's why you need to have finish school you need to have of course to prove uh, that you speak the language in which you are which you are studying yeah this could be english or german how do you prove it uh with an with an exam yeah ielts 6.0 cambridge TOEFL. yeah several uh, exams are accepted um some study programs have also specific requirements yeah for instance if you would like to study something engineering uh, related you know then of course uh, you will have uh, maybe a little bit more mathematics in there. So you need to make sure that you are fine with mathematics. The business study programs, for instance, you would need to prove that you are a or maybe that you have some kind of background on, on economics already, yeah? You can check it on the website, yeah? So 
um, check what are the specific requirements for your study program because they might vary a little bit depending on if you study engineering, business, physiotherapy, and so on. Um, how do you apply? It's actually very easy. It's it's done online, so you can see that link over here, study link in the middle. Um, and until when can you apply? So um, we have two possibilities. Um, there are people that would like to study already in February. Yeah. So we uh, some of the study programs like our ICT program in Eindhoven or our business program in Venlo, they uh, you can start studying them already uh, in February. For this, you can see the deadline over here. It's tomorrow. So you can still apply if you want to study in February. Most students, however, uh, start studying in September next year. So you can see also the deadline over here. Um, it's a little bit later. So you have until the 15th of June next year to apply. Yeah, that means to register a study link to choose which university you would like to study at, which study program in which city. You provide a little bit of data. Yeah, and then uh, you can hand in your diploma, your uh, language certificate afterwards but you need to make sure to apply on the 15th of june this is important because um you can also get accommodation at fontes yeah fontes is one of the few universities in the netherlands that guarantees accommodation for the first year that means that wherever you're situated in france spain belgium the usa and so on you don't need uh, to call in advance in the netherlands and find a place where to live we are going to organize that for you if you apply on time until the 15th of june um, in this case. OK, how much how much does it cost to study at Fontes? It's very simple. You have uh, so it depends on where you're from, actually. Huh? So either you, if, if you're from an EU or EEA country or from a non EU or non EEA country. Yeah, um, let's say you are from the EU. Yeah, like we heard from France, Spain, Belgium. Tuition fees per year are two thousand one hundred sixty eight euros at the moment. If you are from a non-EU country, you have two tuition fees. Why is the difference? Because uh, you have the normal tuition fee, 8,150 per year, or you have, if you would like to study something technical, engineering-like, for which you need a lot of machines, you know, which is uh, actually a just more expensive study program in general, you pay 10,430 uh, euros per year. Okay. Um, living expenses. So how much money do you need each month? And I would like to ask Patrick about that. How much money do you need, Patrick, each month? Um, and for, for living? I'm so, yes. Sorry, I was trying to follow up with the chat as well. Um, no, no problem. Uh, everything. So accommodation, everything. So how much money do you need per month in general? Let's see. For food, I need about 200 euros. And then I would I would uh, leave 100 euros for going out. But right now it's not really happening. So I'm saving that money. <laughs> Um, yeah. and, uh, Fontes accommodation is um, around between 200 and uh, 250, 350 euros as far as I've heard. Uh -huh. So I think, um, yeah, all in all, it's, it's, it's coming down to about 600, 700 euros. Okay, that includes everything, huh? This includes yeah. water, internet, electricity, uh, as you said, going out. Accommodation, so your housing, yeah, food, everything. But that's that would be the bare minimum at the end of the, the bare day. minimum. Okay, bare six hundred fifty, seven hundred, six. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, exactly. That's why we mentioned the curious well. So of course there are people that that uh, live in a larger room, for instance. So the larger your you know, dormitory room, the more expensive it is, of course. Um, and some people like to spend more simply. Yeah. So we said okay, you need roughly seven hundred, but. You know, maybe a little bit more depends also on the city where you're located. Seven, eight, eight hundred, nine hundred euros per month. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, may I ask where you're living? Uh, I'm living in a studio apartment. Studio apartment alone, or are you yeah, with I'm some alone. other students? Uh, now you're I'm alone. Your accommodation myself. Okay, also in the first year. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. So this is also one possibility. Like Patrick, if you are, you know, short. Uh, that you that you will find something. So I guess Patrick, you did it in advance, right? Before coming to the Netherlands, or how did you do it? Yeah, I did a few months in advance. Okay, a few months in advance. Well, exactly. I did my research a few months in advance. The apartment I got it one month before the study started. Ah, okay, good. So this is also possible. If you want to get your own apartment, you need to take care of it in advance, of course. Okay. If not, uh, Fontes make uh, will make sure that you that you, that you will be accommodated. And how does it look like? Uh, it's usually you you're going to share an apartment with two or three other students. 
uh, share an apartment means that you will have your own room, yeah, uh, but that everything else will be shared. Like usually you have a kitchen, you have uh, a balcony, you have a room uh, for um, your, your washing machine, for instance, yeah, for, for your cleaning stuff. You have a toilet, you have a bathroom. You might have like a little basement for you to your bike, yeah. And sometimes you have a nice parking lot if you are here by car. You know, some people come by car to the Netherlands. It's also no problem. That's also possible. So basically, uh, the, the rooms are furnished. Furnished means that you don't need to take anything with you. Huh? You have everything necessary to live there, to cook, and so on, work there as well. Yeah. Um, there are different possibilities uh, to get loans or to get grants, scholarships in the Netherlands. Um, you know, you see the link over here, duo.nl. I'm going to post all the links that we discuss in this presentation afterwards in our chat so that you have all the links that are mentioned over here so you can check out what kind of loans uh, can you get um, while uh, studying and especially working in the Netherlands. Yeah, there are different kinds of possibilities of how you can finance yourself while working and getting something from the government as well. Okay, um, just a little hint. If you say, hey, I would be interested in one of the study programs, but uh, I would still like to talk to someone like Patrick, for instance, so to a student that is studying already the study program. I would like to talk to a student from my country. Yeah, that's no problem. We have our student ambassadors. These are students that uh, are studying at Fontes from different countries, from different study programs that if you go to the website that I will also post in our chat, you can get in touch with. Yeah, so you just, you can write them, hey, I would be interested in studying marketing or physiotherapy or IT. And I would like to hear your experience. Like, what are you doing exactly? What do I need? Am, am I prepared? Do I need to prepare in advance? Everything that you would like to know, you can ask our students. Yeah, so feel free to uh, just check out the website and, and uh, yeah, contact our students. Yeah, of course, uh, it's there are people that don't know what they would like to study. Like I, I didn't know what I want to study. I had to figure it out myself. You don't have to figure it out yourself anymore. Why? Because there are different events that Fontes is organizing that can help you to do. So, and I'm going to present you two of them. Right now, which, which are starting from today, are the virtual open days. That basically means that each study program is going to have a presentation. So if you are wondering, hey, uh, would I like to study something uh, program-based, so programming, yeah? Or would I be maybe better off with studying uh, mechanical engineering, so machine building, for instance, yeah? You can join both presentations, have a look, hey, what is the one study program about? What is the other study program about? If you are a business student and you, know, and you don't know, should I study maybe something more wide, like business or marketing, more specific, yeah? Join both presentations, yeah? Check out what marketing people are doing and what business people will be studying, and then choose the study program that you would prefer. Yeah, so this is something uh, for which you can register from today on on the Fontes website. And for the people that already say, hey, I would like to do business, uh, but they would like to experience what it is to be a student, a business student for one hour, we have a workshop coming. Yeah, international business, um, this time in Fenlo. Fenlo is one of the uh, top business uh, study destinations in the Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, one of the lecturers is going to give a workshop for you. And workshop means not that you are uh, going to just listen all the time, but that you're also going to participate a little bit. Yeah, and to figure out what it is, is it to be, a, to be a business student. And this workshop will be about L'Oreal, the cosmetics company that most of us should know. L'Oreal, 7th of December, you can already register for that. I will join it too, yeah, because I'm very interested in this, in this case of L'Oreal. Just experience what it is to be a business student. And of course, if you say, hey, after this presentation, we still have a few questions. You can see on the bottom my name and my email and Patrick's email. I will also post it uh, in our chat box. Actually, I will do it. Uh, I will do it in a few seconds. So you can contact us uh, via email or via Facebook or whatever you prefer, Patrick. I don't know, Instagram or whatever. Um, I also have a phone number. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can uh, post it. <laughs> I can, that I can be reached. At. Uh, I will also post, uh, post it in the chat. Okay, great. Okay, so basically, if you have, should have any questions uh, with regards to, to the programs, feel free to to write us. That's what we're here for. Okay. Yeah. And that would be it from our side. If you have any questions, please. I know that Linda has been uh, already answering a lot of questions in the chat, or actually most questions, and Patrick as well. So um, if there should be something else, then 
ask huh? either write it in the chat or if you prefer to to ask me or Patrick a question like live, you can unmute and pose it. No problem. OK, uh, um, I'm going to answer some questions um, like this because I, I'm uh, not keeping track of all the questions. OK, but, but Linda, Linda, I will take care of, of the last one. Huh? I, I see you, uh, uh, Victoria. Victoria is asking, I have a general question. Do the Dutch and international IB students work together with project and assignments? Yes, international business students. The program is only offered in English, so it doesn't matter if you are Dutch, German, uh, Romanian, American, whatever, you're going to work together. So there's only one study program for all nationalities. Yes. Um, let's, let's, uh, if you have attended an international school curriculum taught in English, do you still have to prove your knowledge of English? It depends. It depends on your on your citizenship. Um, this, is, this is a question that you uh, usually can pose to our um, to, to our um, admissions officers, you know, the admissions officers are the people that are going to, to check and manage all diplomas that are coming in and they're going to answer you uh, right away, actually, if uh, you need. So they want to check to have a look at your school and at your nationality because there are certain regulations for, uh, for, 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 for certain countries. Uh, and they're going to tell you in the best way uh, if you need uh, an English certificate, yes or no. Linda, OK, Patrick, you posted your phone number, which is great for WhatsApp. That's very nice. And your email and my email. Thank you very much. It's very good. What I'm going to do is to post all the other links from the presentation. Yes, well. Also in the top right corner, uh, I've been informed that that is. Remy Boniaski. Yeah. Remy Boniaski, I'm not sure. Yes. About it? Kickboxing. Sorry? Uh, in the top right corner of the um, of this slide. Oh, this one? Yeah. Ah, okay, nice. He's a okay. Dutch kickboxer. The famous one. Yeah. Apparently. Okay, nice. Okay, I think we have more questions coming. Let me check that quickly. Linda, can, can you see the questions? Check. Uh, yes, I can, but I'm I'm still scrolling through to see <laughs> questions I didn't answer yet. Ah, okay, wait, wait, but but I can see them now. Okay, uh, Sierra, I saw the um, the deadline to apply is June fifteenth, correct? But when does the application open? It's already open. Yeah, the application so it opens on the first of October, so you can already apply if you like. And uh, some people ask, okay, when is the best time to apply? Should I apply now? because I don't have my school diploma already, or should I apply in June when I maybe will have it? Okay, um, it doesn't matter to us. Of course, you can imagine that most people will apply in the end, you know, so in May, June. So if you would like to get a quicker answers from the university, you know, if you're accepted, you can apply now, you know, so you can apply now, you can, uh, you can uh, already provide um, a, a list of grades. You don't need to have your final school diploma, but, but but you can provide a list of grades. You know, this is something that your school can provide you with and send it to, to, to us. And we can say, yes, you're conditionally accepted. We just need to see uh, your, your school diploma. So you can already apply now, if you like. Does university support to learn Dutch? Yes, um, I, for instance, um, I was studying business. We had Dutch classes included as, as, a, uh, as one of our subjects. It depends on the study program. There are some study programs where Dutch for beginners, so you start from the basics or hi, hello, are you? Hi, uh, how are you? Um, this is included in the curriculum. Some study programs, uh, they don't have it, but then there are extra courses that you can join to learn Dutch. So in general, I would ask, uh, I would answer that question with yes. Um, <laughs> Let's check. Uh, um, Are there any more questions that we didn't answer? Do you have support for people with disabilities? Sierra is asking that. Yes, we do have that. We have people that uh, have di different kinds of disabilities. You know, uh, people that have uh, difficulties difficulties to to read or to to focus to concentrate. Yes, these people. I also had them in my class. 
it's not a problem. Then we, we pay a little bit more attention to them. You know, so, um, I had students that, that said, hey, um, I can't focus in, in general during, during, during lessons. You know, I have these kind of problems. I said, no problem. Then we're going to meet after classes and discuss your questions, you know, then one on one. We do that. These people also have um, uh, more time during uh, exams. So you get extra time while the others have to enter their exam. You are going to, to be given extra time to, uh, to, to finish the exam, actually. Uh, also, we, the university is very easily accessible um, by wheelchairs. So yeah, by which, yeah, we have students in wheelchairs, exactly. Yeah, yeah. no problem, of course. And um, uh, Alex? Yes, I, Chris. Hi, if I can interrupt, because this is a very yes. important uh, uh, subject, I think, because yes. if, if you're from abroad, um, uh, it's sometimes not easy to uh, uh, participate, or especially in these times when uh, in Corona, when we have uh, less uh, student life because everybody has to be in their uh, uh, in their rooms, yes. of course. Eh? Um, yes. So we have a full support system. There's a, a, a it's a different uh, part of our organization that take care of uh, problems like uh, loneliness, uh, depression. Uh, so we have uh, psychologists, we have counselors, and yeah. you can also uh, have um, support on that side. Uh, it's, uh, it, I know it's a, a small min minority of the uh, students who face problems like this, but we, we know that it happens. So uh, uh, also uh, the student ambassadors, uh, they, they don't have a specific uh, uh, task in this, but because we have student ambassadors and we have several uh, Facebook groups, so we know, uh, we, we try to do everything in our power to help you uh, in the beginning so you can settle in, in, it doesn't matter in which city you are. Of course, you also have to be a little bit pro proactive, but sometimes that's difficult. So uh, yes, we help. Perfect. Uh, by the way, that was Chris, our colleague from Eindhoven, also from Fontes. Thank you very much, Chris. You're welcome. Nice. Uh, we have a question from Kata Dora. She's he or she's raising <laughs> her hand. So yeah, would you like? Hi. hi. Um, so my question would be that: What would you say should I include in my CV or motivation letter or personal statement, or is it even required in Fontes? Ah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a very good question. So a motivation letter is always a good thing, I would say. Um, what should be included? You know, a motivation letter has basically three different things that should be mentioned there. Yeah, the first thing is, who are you actually? So so who are you? Say a little bit about you, where you're from, what you did in the past, and how comes that you're applying in the Netherlands and in Fontes? Okay, the second part would be, why do you think would you be uh, a good Fontes student? So so, so how, 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 um, um, uh, how would you fit to the university? You know, uh, show, show that you are aware of what the study program offers, what the study structure is that we just discussed right now, that you know that four years that you know it's a bit more practical that you know that you will have to work in groups with international people and show that you actually are this kind of person yeah that would fit very well into this international environment and the third one is as you say a little bit okay what would be it's, it's usually uh, what would be uh, the benefit of the university of taking you so what makes you special yeah and and uh, why would it be a privilege uh, to say like that for Fontes to have you as a student these three parts should be in there. Thanks. Okay, and basically okay. Uh, uh, such kind of motivational letters, you have the same structure when you apply for jobs. Yeah, who are you? How comes that you're applying here? Um, say a little bit about yourself, uh, show that you fit to the company or the university in this case. And then of course, uh, say what would be the benefits of having you here? Yeah, why should we be very happy to say, hey, welcome, welcome to our university. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not it's not difficult. It's it's usually uh, enough to to write one page. You know, I've seen uh, motivational letters of three pages. That's that's not not required. You know, one page. Some people like uh, prefer two pages. It's more than enough. Yeah, and and CV is not really necessary. If if you mention everything in your letter of motivation, this should be enough. Um, thank you. Yeah. And and may I have one more question? Yes, please. Um, it's that uh, I think I, I found uh, Fontis not so long ago and they said yeah. this courses doesn't require motivation letter for the courses that doesn't require that. Mm -hmm. Do I include anything besides my grades in my final year? 
Aha, okay, yeah, it, it, it can happen. You know that that's a certain study program say, you know what, uh, for this study program, you don't need uh, a motivation letter. That's possible, I then you're anyone. fine. <laughs> yeah, you didn't need one. Okay, exactly, Patrick, exactly. Some study programs don't require. Yeah. Exactly. Um, no, actually, you know, uh, a, a secondary school diploma, a language certificate, if it's required uh, for you, and basically that's it. Yeah, you don't need, you don't need anything else. Um, as I said, huh, as I said, if, for instance, the study program requires that you uh, that you have like a, a specific knowledge in mathematics, or the, uh, that you have to prove that you that you studied a second language, then I would say, hey, you need to somehow prove it. And the easiest way is to do it through a letter of motivation, just to write it down what, what, that you studied Russian, French, Spanish, also at school next to English, for instance, or German. You can write it down, or you can provide a certificate that you say, or you know, some kind of proof. Or if you say, hey, uh, I have some some experience, actually, I, uh, I have some experience with economics, I would like to study business and I have some business experience, you may provide either a letter of motivation for that or something else that proves that, hey, I'm very well prepared uh, for this for the study program. So in this case, you can do that. That's why I say the easiest way is a letter of motivation. But if the study program says no, then nothing else. And okay. Alex, some, uh, some Chris, program. Sorry. Yes. Some some programs have uh, that you have to uh, uh, present a portfolio or show your skill. So, for instance, uh, the, the the circus school will not yep. take uh, 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 anybody. Uh, there's a, a number of spots, and you mm -hmm. got to be of an excellent uh, uh, performer, or uh, yes. uh, you got to be a potential. Uh, so, for instance, uh, the conservatorium, uh, if you want to be a, a violin player. Uh, mm -hmm. There's only uh, five or six uh, spots. Uh, so uh, sometimes it's also skills and not only uh, your motivation. Eh? It's uh, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Very good point, Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, are there any questions that we didn't answer yet that we overlooked somehow because there were a lot of in the in the chat box? You may raise your hand and just post them if you like. Just voice them. Any questions that we didn't answer? OK, that doesn't seem to be the case. You know, if there should be something, if you some question pops up, you have our emails right now. You can simply ask us, no problem. We're trying to respond as quick as possible. You see that we're even working on Saturday sometimes. So. Yeah. No problem for us. OK, well, if there are no more questions, um, thank you very much for your attention. Um, as I said, from now on, you can you can uh, join the, the different virtual open days uh, webinars to inform about your specific study program. And there again, ask questions to the lecturers that are going to present these programs to the students. And of course, the workshop on the 7th of December for business students that um, like to experience what it is to study business. Oh, one more question. Is Fontes a popular <laughs> university? It's yes. one of the biggest <laughs> universities in the Netherlands. So I would say we have a market share, if I'm not mistaken, of 9 to 10 percent. That means that every 10 students is a Fontes student in the Netherlands. Yeah. And it's also one of the top five universities in the Netherlands, according to the rankings. And some study programs are even number one, like mechatronics. Business are, I think, number two or three. So um, it is a very popular university in the Netherlands, yes. And it's a university uh, that has one of the highest, I think, the second highest amount of international students in the Netherlands. I think only Maastricht. Also the second and, highest amount of students. Yes, second highest amount of students and second highest amount of international students. Yes, exactly, Patrick. So, yes, it's a very popular and well known university. <laughs> I think all in all, there are 44,000 students. I don't know the new numbers. Yes, 44,000 students, which is quite a number. Exactly, yeah. Aha, uh -huh, wait, we have one more question from Nadifa. When's the rescheduled date for the open day of MSc in Business Management? We need to uh, we need to set set a date for that. Yeah, uh, we, will, we will write you about that because we have a master's program, what you're writing about here, that is in cooperation with the British University. I'm one of the lecturers, by the way, of. Uh, this program and uh, there will be a new date where you can inform Nadifa. We will inform you about that. But good that you're asking. Well, if there are no more questions, okay. Uh, hey, Chris, something for you. 
is the physiotherapy program popular as well? Well, the physiotherapy uh, <laughs> study, uh, uh, I worked there. Uh, yes, it's very popular. We had a, an, uh, uh, we have uh, in the faculty where there is also uh, MERT, medical imaging radiation therapy, uh, logopedy, podology, human technology. Yeah? So we make mm -hmm. uh, blades for blade runners and uh, disability uh, uh, products. Uh, there's also a program for that. Uh, but the physiotherapy uh, program is uh, very popular. We have uh, this first, uh, uh, in this year, we have 133 English uh, students. Uh, so uh, in total, there's a few hundred Irish, Spanish, uh, Americans, uh, some from Far East, uh, a really, really good mix. And we've been, uh, uh, we are growing. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a program that's in English for the last uh, eight years now, and uh, we are really developing it. Yeah. Okay. So, and if this is uh, in English. The second of the, the there's only two physiotherapy programs: one in Groningen and one in um, uh, Eindhoven. And Groningen is, yeah, how much? 250 kilometers up north. This is really up north, north of uh, Holland, and we're in the in the south. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in general, very popular program, you say? Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, there was one more question. Okay, I think Linda, you 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 <laughs> you answered already. Uh, mechatronics is it only available in German? No, it's available in, in both languages. You can study it in English in Eindhoven, but if you say, hey, I would like to study in German mechatronics then uh, you can do it in Fenlo as well, you know, the city that is close to Germany. You can choose. And there's one more question for Chris in the chats. Yes, which one? Can you read uh, it out? I'm having a bachelor's degree in sports sciences at the end of this year in France. I'd like to attend the physiotherapy program next year. Is there any equival equivalence uh, courses, ECTS, between these two programs? Uh, it's depending on the level of your degree. So uh, uh, what you, uh, if I can recap the question, uh, you would like to have uh, uh, looked into the fact if you have some uh, uh, parts of the program you don't have to do because you are already a physical educator. Uh, normally, it's not the case, but I know that the physical education uh, program in France, well, from some institutes are from an extremely high level. So uh, we have to look into this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I cannot give a specific answer. Normally not, uh, because we also have phys uh, physical educators starting a second bachelor and they go to physiotherapy. Uh, so they already have a bachelor, but then they have to start in the first year because um, yeah, the level of physiotherapy is uh, uh, you got to learn uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, so it's not uh, difficult, but it's uh, a really big amount of uh, uh, knowledge that you have to have in your uh, that you have to have uh, gain in your first year. So all uh, muscles, all bones in Latin uh, uh, by name, uh, all junctions, uh, uh, and that's only anatomy. Yeah? So there's uh, also physics and all the other things. So it's uh, um, it's not an easy program. So uh, I cannot say yes, I cannot say no, but uh, if you apply, uh, you will get reaction uh, quite quick if uh, there's possibilities, yes or no. And maybe you, you have to um, bring up documents that prove that you have a certain level of a certain uh, um, program. No, not program, fuck, yeah. Subject. <laughs> Subject, that's the word, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Chris, we do have another question for you. Oh. Um, uh, you can see it in the chat as well, but I can read it out loud. Um, Chris, I'm interested in biomedical engineering. I do not see that major list at Fontes, but that's logical because we do not, do not offer it. Yeah. But um, Sierra says, I'm interested in your work with uh, prosthetics. Which program was that that included yeah, that? Yeah, that's a very specific program, but it's only in Dutch. Oh. So we have three or four programs where we make, uh, where we learn students to make Protheses, 
uh, we make them uh, uh, let them make um, ICT technical things like uh, uh, VR programs. Uh, but unfortunately, there is a limited amount of uh, positions in this Dutch course, and uh, the, uh, it's getting more popular. So we uh, last year we had to refuse uh, some uh, um, some students, uh, uh, and and it's only in Dutch. But uh, I think I'm not 100% sure, but I can figure that out. Uh, if uh, uh, there, there's a master at the technical university, but then you have to have a bachelor first. So we don't offer bachelors for this. Yeah, Chris Sierra already says, I guess I'll have to learn Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank well, you. That's, uh, that's something, yeah. <laughs> if you're really hey. motivated, that's possible. Hey, we have a very good question here from Simon. Is there any question that you thought so us? I think that's uh, already a very good question. <laughs> that, we, that we would ask. So which which questions do we think you would ask? Any ideas? Patrick, Chris, Linda? No, well, I think just asking that question is already saying a lot about this. <laughs> yeah. I think that we don't have to ask any more. <laughs> plus, uh, um, uh, we have like uh, 10, 15 uh, uh, colleagues working on, pro uh, on presentations like this. So we know from experience from the last 20, 25 years, what questions the, uh, the potentials normally have. And all the answers are in this presentation. Yep. So I, I think we got it fully <laughs> covered. And, uh, uh, but if we were also willing to be surprised. Eh? So, we're, so if you can uh, uh, be critical and uh, say, hey, I, I missed this. <laughs> We're open to that. Uh, one question that I got once a few years ago during during uh, one student asked me, "Hey, will I have friends when I study with Fontes?" <laughs> Definitely, and you will have friends. Uh, I had friends <laughs> approximately if you live in the student dormitory, for instance, or together with other students within the first week. You have like Patrick, how many? 50, 60, 100 new friends, something like that. Oh yeah. And uh, as, I, as I've already said, uh, Fontis takes well care of uh, grouping you together with uh, with your course and with the other Fontis students yeah. from the beginning. So normally you'd have the introduction week where <laughs> we just have a lot of fun activities. And I, I, I saw almost everyone in that week uh, that I had in my course, uh, or um, at least almost everyone that is uh, still around now. And okay, uh, so you basically I'm glad I had that week. Okay, so you had like a preparation week, introduction week before you started your studies officially. It was like a fun introduction week. So we did, uh, we went to uh, a theme park. Uh, we 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 did some climbing and. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's good. Uh, Chris, is there a learning Dutch subject in the physiotherapy English program? Will you learn Dutch in the program? Uh, that's that is possible because sometimes you have internships, if you wish, in Holland. So uh, one student, uh, he's from America. Um, uh, he started to study, fell in love with a, a Dutch girl. They're living together and he's learning Dutch now. And he's, uh, his internship for his graduation is at the Dutch uh, practice of physiotherapists. What and a story. Big, and, and it's a big uh, physiotherapist practice. Uh, uh, and the mandatory thing was that he had to learn Dutch. And he's, uh, he's, he's taking classes. Uh, but uh, sometimes it's depending on, on uh, uh, the program. Some programs also offer Dutch classes. And does physiotherapy offer Dutch classes or is it not part of the curriculum? No, it's not part of the curriculum. Ah, so you have to get a girlfriend or a boyfriend that is Dutch. Then. Yeah, that would be <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. Then we do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, a uh, good question now that we have. Um, about the sports, uh, Spano is, is, is uh, answering. Are there any sports offered at Fontes? Yes. <laughs> I can answer what? that as well. Yes, <laughs> please do that. So all all uh, Fontes um, students uh, are, have a student status. So with your Fontes uh, student card in all cities, I don't know exactly about Venlo, but in all cities you can go well. to the uh, um, university campus sports centers and these sports centers are like re 
really, really big. So uh, the fitness uh, area in the Eindhoven Center is two, three, three, three areas of at least 600 square meters. So there's like 50, 60 people training uh, all over. There's uh, a lot of uh, clubs. So uh, for instance, I'm the coach of the student basketball club. I, I'm the coach of the first year, but there's uh, volleyball, badminton, handball, uh, soccer, baseball, all the sports that you general can do are there. So in Eindhoven, there are like uh, 78 clubs and it's a vibrant sports uh, facility. Huh? So there's also a bar uh, where people gather before and after sport activities. And um, yeah, it's really a social, uh, uh, social area. And you, right. meet, uh, you meet all kinds of people who are studying all kinds of uh, programs. Chris, uh, also rugby? Spano also is asking, rugby. Yeah. also rugby. Good? Yeah, and that's I maybe, for sure. And <laughs> that's maybe to add for Vendel, because we don't have that huge, huge sports faci facility. Ah, okay. uh, but we do have a corporation with different uh, clubs in the area, so students can just, uh, for low fees or free, actually attend uh, sports at different clubs in the uh, Venlo area. Exactly. So, so we had people that, that play squash on a national level. We had uh, people that play badminton on a national level, so Olympics level. Uh, people that study with us. We had football players that uh, played for, uh, for instance, the Fenlo team, and that study. So, uh, we also have like sp uh, specific for people that are very good at sports. Uh, we have specific arrangements that they might not have to uh, attend each class if they have a tournament somewhere abroad. So that's also that's also possible. Um, there was one more question. Are there also, other clubs or organizations at Fontes. Yes, there are other uh, organizations. We have student organizations, different ones. You know, I, I know in Eindhoven we have Proxy. Proxy is for all the IT uh, people studying the different kinds of IT fields. Uh, in Venlo, for instance, you have several of them. So, International Business has its own student association. Marketing Management has its own student association, and there are there are also others. You know, the, uh, different initiatives uh, done by students. Uh, sustainability, so students that, that focus on, on sustainability and so on, on different uh, different fields, uh, all managed and organized by students. Yes. Anything else, um, Chris? For you, how does the propedeutic uh, year works in physiotherapy? Can we, can we receive a sketch, a modeling of the first year of all the courses by email, for instance? Can you repeat that question? I so try first, to understand. first year physiotherapy. Uh, what are the subjects? And uh, can can uh, who is it? Is it? It is uh, Leticia. Can she receive it via mail for this, or, or can she see what the subjects are in the first year? Yeah. Okay. What I'll do is I'll put uh, in the chat right now mm -hmm. uh, a link to a movie. Yes. Where it says specifically what we do. Good. Yeah. So you. So I put it in right now. Yeah. We cannot play it because it's like a really heavy, heavy <laughs> yes. file. It's a 360 tour. It's very interesting because you also can uh, have, um, you can choose uh, from what part you uh, uh, you do um, uh, or you want to get information for. Mm -hmm. So it's in the chat right now. Yeah. And of course, you can also go to our website, Fontes at Edu, to Fields and Interest and click on the specific, in this case, physiotherapy program. And there is a full uh, information with uh, uh, what you need to know. Mm -hmm. OK, great. I see it already. You posted it already. That's very good. There was one more question. In general, what is the percentage of Asian or even Indonesian students? Um, about the percentage, I don't know. Do we have Asian students? Yes, because I know them. Uh, we have. Uh, a few, a few to mention. So Indonesia, yes, definitely. Yeah, we have uh, Vietnam, we have uh, uh, Thailand, we have China, we had South Korea, we had Japan, Hong Kong, uh, Malaysia, uh, and I'm missing out several, uh, several others that we had. So um, I know that we have uh, also people specifically um, from our exchange universities. You know that we have universities in, in most Asian countries actually that are partnering with us, and they're sending their students. When we send our students, they send their students to Fontes as well. So in your classes, you will most likely also have these students from Asian countries as well 
that are uh, just in the Netherlands for one year, for instance, yeah, and they are from different Asian countries. Yeah, and maybe to add to that as well, like looking at the nationalities, like the largest group internationally is uh, uh, European, but after that followed by yeah. Asian, and then indeed looking at the uh, Asian groups, the largest group is Indonesian, followed by Chinese. Great, thank you, Linda. Yeah, you just looked it up, I guess, right? You yes, I that. did. <laughs> nice, thank you very much. Very good. Okay, uh, Chris, what is the difference between physio the physiotherapy program? At yeah, Fontes I'm and already and typing the answer in the... You're in typing the, the answer in the chat. Okay, great. Then we take the next one. Is the industrial design engineering program in English? Yes, it is. Yeah. I'm looking at the open days and it's not listed as English. Yes, it is in English. Industrial design engineering, it's only in English, this program. It's an English program. I am very sure. <laughs> And there is one more question from Jane. What is the mm -hmm. difference between the physiotherapy program in Fontes and yes. Fonte? Chris is doing that already Sorry. in the chat. Yes. Sorry. Good one. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Anything else? Yeah, we have someone else typing, which is good. So we'll just wait a few seconds. Questions are always welcome, always good to ask. Uh, hi. Hello. Yes, hi. Uh, I cannot type, so I'll just ask here. Um, yeah, no problem. The courses for people who are looking to study after work. After work, like uh, you, you mean like a part-time course or something like that? Yeah, uh, like post-liberal courses or something. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Linda, uh, would you like to answer that one? Um, sorry, I didn't hear the question because I was going through the, the chat. Could you maybe mm -hmm. repeat it, André? Uh, yeah, yeah so, so I'm looking for a course where I can study after work. I don't know if Fontys has an uh, offer for this. I know that they have the MBA, but I'm looking for something uh, more into my area, maybe. What's your area? Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Um, as far as I know, we do not have part-time uh, master programs in that field. So what I actually would re recommend is maybe look at the Technical University in Eindhoven because they yeah. do have um, those programs um, and that might be more interesting than uh, for what you're looking for. Yeah, the Technical yeah. University is, is our partner university in general. So we, we have programs together, you know, we are we're cooperating with them. So for uh, these specific master programs, also our students will also recommend them, hey, ask directly at our partner, Technical University of Eindhoven. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Mm, let's see. Nice, Jay. Very nice to see that you already registered for the physio webinar. That's good. I also registered for the software engineering webinar. <laughs> <laughs> you actually participated in it. No, nice. It's coming up. Yep. Yeah. Well, you can say I registered. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe I can, you know, sometimes I got the question, okay, research university or applied science university? Like, uh, maybe we, I can say a few words about that because I did both yeah. actually. I studied both both types. Both are good. So, I, um, if someone is asking what's better or worse, that there is no better or worse. Both mm -hmm. result in, in a bachelor degree and both result in a master's degree. It's just um, a different way of studying. Um, well, applied science, more projects, more group work. Um, yeah, so not not only like uh, being alone and, and 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 reading a lot of stuff uh, on your own, you know. And, and research universities also very good. We also had projects, but to a lesser amount. There, I had to really, I had to to buy like several more books, for instance, and and I had to study a little bit more on my own, which was also fine, you know. Working with case studies, we were also. Um, very good materials and maybe like like one of my colleagues uh, lecturing colleagues summarized it what is the difference actually between applied science and and research universities is uh, let's say you are studying economics or something business related and what we usually do is we are we're analyzing companies you know what, what consultants are doing you know they're coming to a company and they're having um, where are the problems or challenges the models that you can use to do that at the research university 
you will learn all 10 models, for instance, yeah, all 10 models that are existing on how to analyze a company at an applied science university. You learn the three mostly applied models by company. So only the three ones that you're actually going to use in your job later on. Maybe this, this summarizes the, um, the difference between these two types of universities. Yeah, applied science is really um, checking what is needed by the companies. You know, we, we also have, we have a committee of, of people uh, working at the companies that are also advising uh, Fontes, hey, what subjects uh, do we need? Yeah, and Fontes is changing the subjects, you know, after after a few years. So we are always adapting uh, the program according to the needs of, of the industry. Yeah, so there there you will see that, that you have like, uh, like, for instance, when I studied, you know, uh, I had different subjects than uh, what is offered now in business because they were adapted. New projects, new companies. Yeah, I did a project with, with Royal Dutch Shell, for instance. Yeah, I did a project with the Metro Group, Metro Cash and Carry. You know, now we do projects with other companies. At uh, 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 okay. Uh, Victoria, do we need to order any course literature ahead of time? No. You will get a book list of books that are recommended uh, when you start studying, and then you can get uh, everything on time. Um, many of the books are uh, available also in the library of Fontes, so you don't need to buy all of the books usually. Patrick, what about you? How many books did you buy, or did you buy actually any books? <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah? The question is if I, um, if I really use them. Um... <laughs> Be honest, come on. Did, did you use the books or, 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 or lectures books enough? I, I did not use the books that I buy. I, uh, I use the digital version more, most of the times. Digital versions, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that, that sometimes like lecturers also advise to, to buy, uh, to get books digitally, for instance, or to get an older version because uh, books for, for students can be quite expensive. So you can get maybe a cheaper version. That's also the library. I can also say that I can post a link in the chat. Uh, with yes. The, uh, I think it's Study Store. Yes. Um, where you can check what the books required for this year are, and we can um, just if you're curious in advance. Ah, okay. So, so basically, there there are certain lists uh, available what books were used this year, so people can, yeah, maybe already have a look at these books if they like to prepare really in advance. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Studystore.nl. Thanks. I think I will also post the uh, English link. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, perfect. Great. Thank you. OK, may, maybe something for Chris uh, again. Uh, Chris, do I have to provide original certified copies of my sports science bachelor? If I can have yeah, the possibility. I already, I already answered, and the answer is uh, yes. OK, so, good. Uh, and they will be uh, checked. So uh, there's a European central system, uh, administration system for all these type of things. Uh, for all universities uh, uh, in all Europe, and uh, they check uh, what the level is and if you made it yes or no. So, but it has to be an original one, yeah. But that's all. Uh, all this information you can also find in the website, mm -hmm. and I also put a link on uh, for our open um, for our open days uh, of the Allied Health Professional uh, that is uh, uh, next Tuesday for physio and Monday for MART. Mm -hmm. And Great. then we go into the uh, specific programs specifically. Right? So then you can ask uh, other relevant questions like this. Mm -hmm. Great. Letitia already registered, she says. Ah, great. Great. <laughs> See you then. <laughs> Okay, I I have a series of questions I already locked on. Okay, <laughs> Simon, let's start all over. <laughs> Simon, oh, just to let you know as well, we do have another session at uh, the same session again at two o'clock this afternoon. So it might be interesting for you to join that if that suits your agenda. Yeah, yeah. we're closing down. <laughs> I have to go. Yeah, we're just closing down actually. <laughs> Uh, two yeah, o'clock. Two o'clock. I'll, I'll send you the direct link to register for that. Just a second. Yeah. Because then you can just register for that one, and we can uh, we then see each other this afternoon as well. Let me just check where it is. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, but Simon is from St. Lucia, he says. <laughs> it's 6 a.m. in the morning, okay? Oh, yeah. oh wow. <laughs> Wait. So, so then he can wake up and uh, have breakfast <laughs> before he, uh, so he can digest our information. Yeah. yeah. In two and a half hours, Chris will do the session, so... If I already <laughs> go back to sleep and uh, put an alarm for 2 a.m. <laughs> for 2 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just yeah. check just a second. There you go. Wait, I'll uh, put it in the chat. There Great, you thank, go, Simon. Thank you, Linda. Yes. Yeah, you can just register for that one. I think that's time-wise. You can still go to bed and uh, chill a little bit, and then we see yeah. each other later on. <laughs> Nice. Um, any more questions? So let, let, let's make a last round. <laughs> more than welcome, Simon. Yeah, let's wait a few more seconds. Uh huh. So Nadifa is asking for leisure time. Can we walk around uh, and sightsee in Fenlo around the campus? Why not? Yeah. Uh, we for sure, you for sure can, and we are actually also, Chris uh, beforehand shared a VR tour of uh, the Eindhoven campus, but we, all, we are working on a Venlo one as well, so you can see that as well how it looks. But it's, yes, for sure you can walk around, see nice things, it's very green there, and lots of bike paths, so yes. A few years ago, Venlo was uh, chosen to have, together with The Hague, uh, to have the most beautiful city centre uh, in the Netherlands. So uh, why, 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 what was it chosen? Yeah, uh, because uh, it has still uh, very old buildings, you know, like really, really uh, nice, nice old buildings that, that, that you can, cannot see in, in, uh, in every city in the Netherlands. And that's why it's a very nice atmosphere. Also a lot of green fields in Fenlo. Fenlo has the best ice cream in the Netherlands, which we are very proud of, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a nice, uh, a smaller, smaller city than, than Tilburg and Eindhoven, but it's, it's nice, uh, also international city, uh, in, in the Netherlands, yeah, only two minutes away from Germany. So you can also hear uh, a lot of German tourists going to Venlo to eat. Uh, you have 15 minutes from Venlo uh, by train. You have the biggest outlet store in Europe. All the huge brands, uh, Gucci, Armani, Nike, Adidas, and so on, they have their stores there with uh, products that are reduced up to 50%. And we have our students working there as well. So not the worst place to Yeah, nice insights because I've just known Fenlo. Yeah, because of all, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Uh, people here hear uh, hear about Fenlo either because they are um, involved in logistics, then they know Fenlo. Uh, some sometimes because they they went to the Netherlands and they thought, where can we go? Definitely. Uh, sometimes during sports because Fenlo has a football team in the first league. Uh, yeah, of course. And of course, if you live in Germany, you know Fenlo for sure because uh, lots of tourists, Germany and Belgium, so in, in the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh -huh. Any more questions? I can see Chris now as well. Okay, yeah, uh, <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of people already locked out, so uh, it's uh, possible oh. to share screen now. <laughs> okay, great. And I can I, I, I'm going to check my new uh, background right now. Okay, great. Oh. <laughs> okay, um, well, if, if there are no questions, so then... Uh, yeah, you're very welcome. Very welcome. If there are no questions, then uh, I, I wish you a nice week. Oh, we wish you a nice weekend. Uh, of course, feel free to to sign up for the uh, upcoming presentations, either with Chris today at two o'clock, or of course, uh, starting from today on for different study programs. Seventh uh, of December, the International Business Workshop, and otherwise, enjoy your weekend, even in Saint Lucia, where it's very early in the morning. Yeah. It was